I'm not getting ROI. I'm spending 4K to get a sale worth 3K, so I'm losing 1K. Okay, so where in that pipeline are things going wrong? Like, what's your cost per strategy session? And then, uh, based on that, like, what we're really doing is, and I, I guess this is a good question to answer. Hold on one second here. So this one is a, people really mess this one up. So we'll go on to this little whiteboard. If we've got Facebook ads coming in here, and then we've got the landing page, and then we've got the value video, and then we've got the uh, schedule once and survey. Then we've got the strategy session. And then we've got the customer, right? So that's our basic flow here. And if we want to try and figure out, is this thing working or not? Well, that was the alarm to send that message. So what we want to do is we want to figure out if it's working. We, what do we, how do we define like success with this process? We've got the total amount spent on ads. And then we've got the total amount received down here in sales. Right? And what we're basically trying to do is see if the total amount from sales is like, and then. Uh, if we take the amount from sales and then we uh, subtract ad spend, like is there a surplus or is there a deficit? So for example, if we spent uh, 2,000 on ads, but then we received 1,000 in sales, then we're minus like $1,000. Obviously that's not very, that's not ideal, right? So that's the only thing I check first of all. I don't care about my landing page conversion. I don't care about my cost per click. I don't care about any of that. If this number here is good, like if I spend a grand on ads and make five grand in sales, I'm not gonna care about what my landing page conversion rate is. I'm not gonna care about what my cost per click is. I'm not gonna care about any of that stuff. So we always start with like, is it working? Is it profitable? If it is, spend more money on ads. Don't worry about changing the funnel. I see people all the time, they're like, Sam, my landing page is broken, or Sam, my, I need to change my video, I need to change something in my funnel. And I'm like, well, what's, are you, how much money are you spending on ads? How much money are you making? All right, you're making a lot of money. Why, you don't, don't change anything. Spend more money on ads. So if the throughput is good, increase the volume. But if the throughput isn't good, then you need to change something in it, right? So then what I do is I start from the end and then I work my way backwards. So you don't start from the front, you start from the back. And so then I'll come here and I'll be like, how many strategy sessions have you generated, right? And then uh, I'll use some numbers. I'll use some numbers here, like let's say, Let's say this person generated five strategy sessions and out of that, they, I'd be like, how many strategy sessions did you generate? How many sales did you make? And I'd try to figure out their call conversion rate. Like what is their call conversion rate? Which is, and it should be like greater than or equal to like 15% and the higher the better, right? That, but if they don't have any strategy sessions or if they generated five strategy sessions and they made zero sales, then we can't figure out call conversion rate. We don't know what that is. 
you only know what that number is when you've generated strategy sessions and you've sold some people, right? So in the absence of this measurement, then we just fall back onto the next stage, right? So if you don't have that data, you have to keep falling back. And then if, let's say someone was, they had a call conversion rate of 20%, so they had five strategy sessions and they sold one person, that's a good call conversion rate. There's nothing wrong with that. So then why are they losing money, right? Well, then that means that there's an issue happening somewhere through here or the price of their product. So someone might have a really good performing ads, really good performing funnel, really good uh, performing sales conversion rate, but they're still losing money. It means their product's priced too, like incorrectly. However, that's the, and that is why I tell most people that if you're using a sales call model and you're using paid traffic, then you really need to have a higher ticket price. You really need to be selling something for like two grand or above to make the economics of this system work. And so if then I check, if I check the price of their thing, their, the thing they're selling and that's above greater than or equal to 2000, then we're good. But it gets more nuanced than that. Cause then they're like, but I'm still losing money and my product is $3,000. And then, so how does that happen? Right? Well, that's because people use payment plans and they haven't differentiated from there's cash and then there's revenue, right? Like let's say your product is, is $3,000. You could sell it for one payment of $3,000. You'd get three grand in cash. But if your product was $3,000 and you sold it for three monthly payments of a thousand, then in revenue, you would have 3000, but in cash, you'd only have one. So you have to always pay Facebook with cash. So that's where the issue is coming. So really, when you're looking at that down there, you need to be collecting at least $2,000 in cash. If your product's two grand, then you need to be collecting two grand. And if your product's six grand, then the minimum payment plan you can have is three payments of 2,000. You really need to be liquidating and collecting at least $2,000 in cash to make the economics of this thing work with a call conversion rate greater than or equal to 15%. If you've priced your product at, a, at the right price down there and you don't have disgusting payment plan options and you're collecting on average more than $2,000 on cash on day one of invoices and your call conversion rates greater than or equal to 15% and you're still not making money, then I can tell you that with 100% certainty that it's coming from in here. Right? So this process I use, it's how I can just look at anything and just like any type of sales funnel or anything and immediately analyze it and immediately drill down and diagnose and find the root cause and fix it. Because I know how to work through this whole process. And most other people I see, they just screw it up because they get hung up on different things that they've heard from different people. Like they might say, um, I need to fix my landing page because it's converting at 15%. And I was on a webinar the other day and some, some marketing guy said that your landing page needs to be 50%. And so now they're thinking that they need to change their landing page. It's totally stupid. You don't, it doesn't matter. It, this, this stuff down the end matters. I can tell you with my consulting accelerator 2K funnel, which we teach in up level, um, I've been running that funnel for three and a half years, almost four years, right? I've used the same landing page for like all four years. And we've spent probably $15 million on ads. And we've probably sent almost 45 million clicks to that landing page. And it's made like, uh, it's made almost $50 million. Okay. So, that landing page converts at 15%. So when people tell you that a 15% converting landing page is stupid, then they're stupid. So the next thing to look at past there would be this next piece, which is schedule once in the survey. So another thing that's important is like, what is the cost per strategy session? So the cost per strategy session, how much does it cost for you to generate a call? The higher this number is here and the higher your product price is, 
the more you can afford to pay per strategy session, right? The lower this is, and the lower this is, the less you can afford to pay per strategy session. So really the threshold cost per strategy session price, given a greater than or equal to 15% conversion rate on the call, and a greater than or equal to $2,000 sale price, given that all of that is collected in cash, would be uh, less than or equal to like 300 bucks. Now that's threshold price. So the lower the better, but all of this stuff can work if these numbers are true, right? So you can pay up to $300 a strategy session if your conversion rate's like that and your pricing is like that. Now, you can get strategy sessions for a lot less. I'm just telling you the threshold. But for example, someone might have the right price here, they might be collecting the right amount of cash, and their conversion rate on the strategy sessions might be more than that, but they're not making money. Well, their strategy session, they might be paying way too much per strategy session, right? That's the only way that can, that can happen. So then why are they paying too much dollar, uh, money per strategy session? Well, we have to look through here. And so if we look at the strategy session piece, I'll break this out into like a subsystem here. If we have the, uh, the there can be a lot of, a lot of erosion from schedule once to survey to like, to a strategy session. The, there can be a lot of, a lot of decay through here. So. People can schedule with schedule once, but not complete the survey. That doesn't count as like a cost per strategy. That doesn't count as like an application. You don't take calls with people who schedule with schedule once, but don't complete the survey. You don't do those calls, you cancel them. And then if there's a high drop off rate between these two points, which is going to look like greater than or equal to uh, probably, I think the highest, Actually, we'll call this one. You should have a less than or equal to uh, I'm going to probably say 30% here. So if you got seven, you got 10 people to complete to schedule with schedule once, and only seven people completed the survey, that means that you know, you you had a drop off of 30% here. If yours is like 50%, then you probably need to change something. Your survey might be too too long and too intense, or the quality of the people you're getting through might not be uh, good enough, and you want to you want to change your value video to disqualify people better, right? Because if you disqualify people better and say this isn't for you, this isn't for you, if you if if any of these, then less people will probably book with this, and then there'll be less drop off here. Also, the quality of traffic can influence this. If you just put real bad traffic through, of course, there's going to be a big drop off. You know you've got a problem here if this is if this is higher than that. And then with then there's another point that there can be drop off through here, which is from the survey uh, to a strategy session. So here you can have like cancellations. You look at people's surveys and you might cancel them because they look they don't look. Uh, like they're a good fit, right? Now, cancellation rate, you're probably looking at somewhere around like 20%. So if you get 10 surveys, then you're probably gonna cancel two. If you're canceling more than 20% of surveys, then you're probably being too strict or the quality of the traffic coming through isn't right and you need to change the ads or you need to change the audience or you need to change the video and your disqualification. And then if these numbers are like this, then there's one other point where people can drop off. And that might mean that someone scheduled with schedule once, they completed the survey, and you looked at their survey, you didn't disqualify them, and then you were planning to have a call with them, but on the day, you called them and they didn't answer the phone, right? That's called a no-show. And that's really another point where people can drop off. And your no-show rate should be like roughly 20%. If your no-show rate is higher than 20%, then you're probably not cancelling enough. And if you're cancelling roughly 20% and your no-show rate is higher than 20%, then you are not getting the right traffic. 
coming through. And that could be because of the ads, it could be because of the audience, or it could be because you're not disqualifying enough in your value video, right? And so that happens here at this level. And these, this is a good place to look to try and improve the throughput of schedule once to survey the strategy session to an actual call. But then that's how you can optimize this. Then we look at like the value video and you should have a conversion rate of leads to strategy sessions at a rate that is like, and I'm pretty sure I call this video conversion rate and that should be greater than or equal to like, uh, should be roughly 4%, right? So if a hundred people opt in on the landing page, then we should get roughly four surveys completed. And if we get less than this, then we want to look through here to make sure there's not a lot of drop off in here. Or, and if this thing here is good, but this number is still low, then it is because the value video isn't performing its, its main function. The value video, the message isn't aligning with the market. You're probably not solving a problem. You're probably, you probably invented your solution without ever talking to a market and you probably don't even know what your niche is and you really have no idea what you're doing and your entire business sucks and you need to start again, right? Any of those things could happen. Uh, or you could just have, you could have done your research, right? Your niche might be, might, be clear, you've actually solving a problem, you validated it with the market and you've got a solution, but your messaging might just be off and you need to tweak the messaging, right? Those things could be happening in here. Uh, and if all of these scenarios are true, then we would look in here and we'd try to fix this. But also it can be the traffic, like you could just be targeting the wrong people or the ads might be off. And then we would look at the landing page conversion rate. So if the sales and cash numbers were good, if our call conversion rate was good and cost per strategy session, um, well, let's say our call conversion rate was good, through here, the drop-offs were good and our value video was converting good, but we're still not making money, then we're looking at the landing page and then we're gonna look at the ads. So then it might be that your landing page conversion rate, I mean, really this should be uh, greater than or equal to like 15% roughly. That means you get 100 people to click from Facebook, you should get 15 people to opt in. If, and then that means that your cost per lead is gonna be roughly, um, I've seen good like cost per leads. It should be less than or equal to, uh, really you can probably pay up to like $20 with a good high ticket funnel, but the lower the better, right? Um, but if your landing page conversion is at like 5%, then you've got an issue. Then we would look at, I would look at the traffic because the traffic's probably bad. In most cases I've seen, it's not so much a case of the landing page and it's more a case of the traffic. Most, like nine times out of 10, the problem is with the traffic, not with the landing page. And so I always look at the traffic. If I change things on the traffic side by changing the ads and changing the audience and playing with that and I still can't get a good landing page conversion rate, then I'm probably gonna change the landing page. But I'd I would, pretty much always play with the Facebook ads instead of the landing page. And then finally, let's say that we have a 20% conversion rate on our landing page and our cost per lead is just ridiculously high. Well, then we know it's because you're just paying too much money for Facebook ads. And then we look here and then I would look at the CPC and this is the link, CPC link. And this should really be less than or equal to like, it really should be less than or equal to three bucks. Really that should be like two bucks, right? And that's a link click, cost per click link. If you're paying $7 per link click, then it doesn't matter really what your landing page conversion rate is, this cost per lead figure is gonna be high. And then it doesn't really matter what your value video conversion rate is, 
your cost per strategy session is going to be too high. And then it doesn't matter what your uh, strategy session conversion rate is, the cost per acquisition is going to be too high. So all of these different steps inherit everything from the step before. And because it has this inherent structure, we have to start with the end and work backwards. And we have to look at all of these numbers and reverse engineer it all the way back. And so when people are asking me, so how we went down this rabbit hole here is that someone was asking me, I've been changing my landing page and it's not converting well. What should I do? <laughs> like this. <laughs> the, I don't, you haven't given me anywhere near enough information for me to give you a good, a good answer to that question. You know, I could say change the headline. I could say, I could say do some, like put a button that's red on there or something, but it would be stupid. Not like the landing page is, it's really only a small little part of an overall system. And it's understanding the whole system that matters. It's not understanding the parts. And most digital marketers only understand the parts and they have no idea about the system. I can tell you that I've met zero people that know how to do this. So it's rare. And if you learn how to do it, then you'll make a lot of money because it's just math. Like there is no magic in this thing. Was that helpful? Let me know if that was helpful.